In particle physics, there are lots of particle names, mostly ending with the syllable on. Electrons, protons, hadrons, baryons, leptons, mesons, and the list goes, well, on. But two particles have a special meaning, and those are fermions and bosons. Unlike all the other particle names, which are related to particles' electric charge, mass, or the forces they feel, the factor that both ties together and distinguishes fermions and bosons is the idea of subatomic spin. Since the early part of the 20th century, physicists have known that there is a natural unit of spin. This unit is represented by a symbol which is an H with a little slash through the top of it. We call it H-bar, but it is more properly called the reduced Planck constant. It has a value of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Now that numerical value isn't something that you have to remember because we scientists use it as a unit, just like you might use pounds or kilograms. I mean, when you weigh yourself, you probably don't always attach the unit. You don't say, the scale said 150 pounds. You just say, the scale said 150 today. In terms of spin, it's kind of the same way. If a subatomic particle has a spin of one unit of h-bar, we just say that the particle has a spin of one. If it has a spin of four units of h-bar, we say that the particle has a spin of four. When we talk about fermions and bosons, they represent different classes of particles, and they are distinguished by their spin. Bosons all have a spin that is an integer multiple of h-bar. They have spins of 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. In contrast, fermions all have half integers of spin, specifically a half, three halves, five halves, etc. So you might wonder if there are other possible values of spin, say a third or a quarter or something like that. The answer seems to be no. We have never observed any particles with any value of spin other than an integer or half integer. Now, you never say never in exploratory physics, and it may be that we'll find some new particle governed by new rules, but we probably won't. The reason I say that is that we can tie the spin to the mathematics that describes the particles. The technical term for the mathematics is called the wave function, but there appears to be just two possible forms. In one case, the equation of the particle seems to be symmetric, which means that if you flip it around the center, it looks just like it did before the flip. In the other case, the equation of the particle is antisymmetric, which means if you flip it around the center, it's the opposite. This has real consequences when you're trying to do calculations, but you'll have to trust me on that one. Bosons, the particles with integer spin, are described by symmetric wave functions, while fermions, their half-integer spin cousins, have antisymmetric wave functions. If fermions and bosons are different kinds of particles, they must have different properties, right? How are they different? Bosons are the puppies of the subatomic world. The more, the merrier. You can have an unlimited number of bosons in the same place at the same time. In contrast, fermions can be thought of as subatomic cats. They're standoffish. Two identical fermions cannot be in the same place at the same time. If you ever took a chemistry class, you probably encountered the Pauli exclusion principle, which explained why atomic orbitals are the way they are. It boiled down to identical electrons cannot exist, and since electrons are examples of fermions, it all hangs together. In the particle physics world, all of the particles of matter, the quarks and the leptons, are fermions. In contrast, the particles of force, the force carrying bosons, are, well, of course, bosons. Quarks and leptons all have a spin of a half. Well, technically, since they can spin clockwise or counterclockwise, they can have a spin of plus a half or minus a half. But that's a minor complication to what I'm talking about here. What's really important to know is that there are no fundamental particles of the standard model with spins of three halves, five halves, or anything like that. Only a half. On the boson side, there's more diversity. The Higgs boson has a spin of zero. The photon of the electromagnetic force the gluon of the strong force and the W and Z bosons of the weak force all have a spin of one. And the graviton, which is the hypothetical and undiscovered carrier of gravity, must have a spin of two. So that's about it. You have the gregarious force-carrying bosons and the standoffish matter fermions. They are important because they represent two distinct classes of particles in the standard model. 
They also have an interesting significance in that the fermion and boson roles in the standard model are blurred in some speculative theories that go beyond the standard model. For instance, in a class of theories that include a principle called supersymmetry, all of the known fermions are hypothesized to have new boson cousins that are identical in every way except for spin. Similarly, the known bosons are postulated to have a new cousin fermion. I made a couple of videos about supersymmetry and why the idea is considered interesting by researchers. Check them out if you want to learn about the idea. In this video, my goal was to teach you about the differences between fermions and bosons, and I hope I've done that, because all of these particle physics terms are enough to make your head spin.